and Space Museum's Center for Earth and Planetary Studies. And to the museum programs that the Smithsonian does, we all the Center for Earth is on the surface, mostly the surfaces of the Moon, Mars, and also the solar system. And the story that I'll talk about in 10 minutes Area of space. It was visited by which gave us images of the surface of, of Pluto. In looking at that, glaciers of nitrogen. I've been doing this work for and glaciers one of the most stunning things that I've seen uh, during that entire time. I'm not but on Pluto, from the sun, and because it's so cold, nitrogen uh, ice deforms very easily, and it forms glaciers that we would see. It's a little bit smaller, but it has a larger core of ice, a larger core of rock uh, beneath a, a surface and mantle of ice. And then uh, Maki Maki, uh, Haumea, Sedna, uh, one which doesn't have a formal name yet, 2007 OR10, Quawar, and, and Orcus. These objects mostly occupy this area out beyond uh, the orbit of Neptune, although there is a family of, of objects that um, live temporarily in this area between Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. All of these uh, yellow uh, colored objects here on this chart are uh, unstable. Um, those objects will eventually interact with one of the giant planets and they will be perturbed uh, either to come in closer to the sun or to collide with one of the planets uh, or to uh, uh, ultimately just be thrown out of the solar system. So, so basically, you know, these places just need to abandon hope. I mean, there is no way for them to remain stable in this area of space. A little bit farther out, beyond the orbit of Neptune, um, you see a, a bunch of objects that are, um, that, that orbit the sun three times for every two orbits of Neptune. And this is a stable area. Um, these objects, some of them will actually cross the orbit of Neptune and come closer to the sun than Neptune, but because they're in that a uh, special uh, three to two spacing with Neptune, they never actually get close enough to Neptune to where they can be uh, perturbed and thrown out. And so Pluto is safe where it is. Beyond Pluto, there is uh, an area called the classical Kuiper belt. And those objects are in also stable orbits, uh, many of them circular, and, and they, they never get close enough to Neptune to where they have to worry about it. And then beyond that, um, going from about 48 times the distance from the Earth to the Sun out to vast distances is an area called the Scattered Disk. And that includes uh, a number of worlds that have been thrown from this area near Neptune uh, out into to, uh, farther areas of space. And, uh, and they're going to be there for, for quite a long time. All of these uh, regions of space, you'll notice, are, are either stable or they're unstable um, depending on on how they interact with Neptune. I mean, Neptune is really the, the major source of gravity out here in this area of space, and everything depends on Neptune. Many of these objects uh, in this area of space, like uh, 2007 OR10 here, have moons. And these moons are indications of, uh, probably, of collisions in the past. It's very difficult for a small object like this to capture a, a moon, and so, uh, What's most likely happened is, is at times in the distant past is you'll have uh, other objects collide with these things, throwing material that gets blasted off the surface and collects into orbit and forms a moon in much the same way that the Earth's moon formed. Um, Pluto has uh, a, a large moon. Uh, Eris does as well. Maki Maki does. Uh, Haumea does. Uh, Sedna does not appear to. Sedna is about uh, 600 miles in diameter. It, it rotates once every 10 hours, and, and that suggests that it is probably uh, rotating too quickly to 
to have a large moon. It could possibly have a small one that we just can't see from here. And then uh, Coelar and, and Orcus uh, also both have, have uh, large moons that have, have formed in the area. We're going to see one of the smaller Kuiper Belt objects actually fairly soon on January the 1st of uh, 2019. The New Horizons spacecraft, which flew by Pluto in 2015, is going to fly by uh, a, a small KBO, which we know to be elongated. We don't know whether it's just a sort of a, like an oblong potato shape or, or whether it, it may be two bodies uh, that are fairly close together and about 10 miles uh, across each. but. Um, uh, this object, 2014 MU69, was discovered using the Hubble Space Telescope. When New Horizons flew past Pluto, they said, well, the spacecraft is still functioning well. We want to see where it could possibly go after Pluto. And so the Hubble Space Telescope searched an area of space that New Horizons was, was going to fly past. Now, New Horizons doesn't have enough fuel on board. I mean, you can see just the size of it uh, in a, uh, a model that we have just overhead here. It doesn't have enough fuel to, to turn on a dime and make a sharp left turn, but it had enough fuel to be able to tweak its path to be able to go and see something new and different uh, within a, a small area of, of space uh, or narrow area of space out beyond uh, Pluto. And, and this was uh, the object that was, was found, and so we're going to see it up close. This is really one of the building blocks of the worlds in this part of the solar system. One that I think is really interesting is, is Sedna. Uh, this is the one I mentioned. It was about 600 miles in diameter. Uh, rotates uh, fairly quickly uh, in about 10 hours. And it has an orbit that runs from about uh, 76 times the distance from the Earth to the Sun out to more than 900. Um, Sedna is, is a, a world that is uh, like Pluto in some ways, but its orbit is incredibly bizarre. Um, the only way that you can have a world like this uh, occupy such a, a highly elongated orbit like that is to have it flown out into that area of space by an interaction with some sort of a larger body. Um, there has been some suggestion that that, that orbit could result from uh, an interaction between Sedna and another star that formed in the same region of the Sun at the time that the Sun formed. So the Sun probably formed in a cluster of stars. That cluster has over time broken up so that the Sun now uh, orbits the Milky Way galaxy about once every 200 million years, but it, it does that essentially by itself. The stars that you see in the sky today are not the same stars that you would have seen 100,000 years ago because as the Sun is moving through the Milky Way galaxy, there are different stars sort of pass by. But early in its history, there would have been some that would have been close enough to where if you were to stand uh, on the Earth um, during a, a period of, of total darkness, you would have seen uh, these stars be bright enough in the sky to where they could light up the ground to, to the point that you could walk around. Um, and so that's one possibility. Another one which has uh, some support among a number of astronomers is that there may be another planet in the outer solar system um, approximately 10 times the mass of the Earth and maybe about the size of, of Neptune. And the reason why um, they, they think that this planet may exist, now keep in mind this has not been seen, but the reason why they think it may exist is because there are a number of these uh, objects out here in extreme highly elliptical orbits beyond uh, the orbit of Neptune that seem to be aligned with something. There, there is some sort of a large object out there which is controlling the orbits of these of these objects. And, and so when you do the math, uh, you figure out that, well, this is the likely orbit of a ninth planet. And now they're in the process of looking for it. Does it exist? I don't know. Um, you know, like any other scientist, I have a, a wait and see approach to this sort of thing. But I think it would be really fascinating if it, if it were. Um, a planet that is that far away from the sun, a minimum of 200 times the distance between the Earth and the sun, and a maximum of about 1,200 times the distance between the Earth and the sun, uh, would likely be in an extremely cold region of space. How does it get out there? Uh, was it thrown out by an early interaction, say, with Jupiter, or, or with an interaction with another star, or could it have been captured uh, from another star? I mean, those are some of the possibilities that, um, uh, that people are, are thinking about and would have to be explored in the event that this thing is ever found. Uh, I hope it is. When you think about sending a spacecraft like New Horizons to a planet like this, uh, New Horizons would take, um, it took about 10 years to get to Pluto, but Pluto, 
at that time was only about 30 times as far from the sun as the Earth is now. Going from that out to somewhere between 200 and 1200, I mean, you're talking about uh, a trajectory that could take you on the order of a couple of hundred years using the same sort of path that New Horizons took, depending on where this thing is. And, and uh, so in order to reach something like this, you would have to, to do the engineering to develop a spacecraft that would go much faster and would have a nuclear power supply that could operate for longer. I mean, otherwise, you'd be sending the thing out there and hoping that it lives longer than the people that built it. Um, otherwise, you'd have a completely different generation of people seeing the data that are sent back. So I think that a discovery like this, you know, in addition to being a fascinating thing, would help to inspire a lot of the, the engineering development that would allow us to explore uh, more of these regions in incredibly deep space uh, within our own solar system and maybe even pick up some objects uh, that have been captured here uh, from, from somewhere else. Does it exist? I don't know, uh, but it would be uh, really a fascinating discovery if it did. So uh, thank you all very much. I'd be happy to take any questions that you might have. Uh, we'll start with online questions. Um, we've got one about that right there. Um, why does that one object have that round hole in it? Um, this would be an impact crater uh, on this. So basically, anything that's been uh, sitting out uh, exposed to, to uh, uh, objects, meteorites, little asteroids, little uh, Kuiper Belt objects is going to be covered in impact craters. And these are places where little meteorites have hit it and, and blasted a pit in the surface. Uh, the moon is covered with them. Mars has many of them. The Earth doesn't have as many because plate tectonics have turned over the surface and the surface has been deeply eroded over geologic time to the point that most of our craters can't be seen anymore. Uh, any questions from the on-site audience? I have a question about 2014 MU69. So you said it may be a tail-shaped object or maybe two objects right next to each other. Right. Are they, would they be stuck to each other or would they just be attracted to one another? They could possibly be stuck to each other. They, they could be uh, just a short distance apart. At, at this point, we can't tell using the telescopic images that we have. Uh, it's just it's too far away and it's too small to see that level of detail. But as it gets close, they'll resolve that. And it'll either look something like this or it'll be... Uh, you know, two things that are uh, closely attached or pretty, pretty close together. Um, one of the, um, uh, I think, more amazing objects in this area of space is, is Haumea. And Haumea has this kind of oblong, flattened shape. And that's because it rotates once every four hours. The Earth, because of its rotation, is a little bit flattened. It's a little bit fatter at the equator than it is at the poles. And that's because it is, is spun up in this, uh, in this way. But Haumea being a smaller object and having lower gravity and having this very rapid rotation rate has has basically ex extended itself into this kind of oblong shape. And if it were to rotate much faster, it would break up into two separate objects. Um, but uh, uh, anyway, this is, this is an amazing thing because this is actually a stable shape. This is not like an asteroid shape. I mean, it's, it's kind of a uh, potato shape because that was what was left after some collision. Uh, in the past, this shape is actually hydrostatically stable. I mean, it is it is the, the shape that it has pulled itself into, given its gravity and given its very high rotation. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Is there anything that you know of that could have spun faster than Haumea? Is there anything is there anything that could have spun faster than than uh, Haumea? Um, this is one of the uh, most rapidly rotating objects of its size uh, in the solar system. There are some uh, asteroids that are, are in uh, closer into the sun that we know are sort of tumbling along, and, and they're spun up very quickly. I mean, to the point that because they're spun up so quickly and because the gravity is so low, they can't hold rock and soil onto the surface. I mean, it's basically just a rock that's, that's spinning rapidly. Um, so yeah, there are some things that, that go faster than this, but nothing uh, nothing that size. I have another question about our hypothetical ninth planet. Mm -hmm. um, if we know that, if we're suspecting it's existing because of the gravitational effects of some other things that are orbiting, right. why would it be that we couldn't see it if it did exist? Or what could it mean? So the question is, uh, if this uh, hypothetical ninth planet did exist, why would it be that we couldn't see it? And the answer is, we could. Uh, it's just a matter of, of figuring out where it is and looking in the right area of space. 
there, there's an interesting historical parallel to this, and that was the discovery of Neptune. Um, the, uh, the planet Uranus had been known for um, a period of time before Neptune, and as astronomers were watching Uranus in its orbit around the sun, they noticed that there were times when it seems to have sped up or slowed down a little bit, like it was interacting with something beyond that. And they did the math on that, figured out where to look, and found Neptune. And so this is the same sort of idea, except we're looking at a, a much deeper area of space. And, and there are some big question marks about this. I mean, we know about these objects which seem to be aligned with something. And um, uh, Mike Brown, who is a, 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 probably the leading expert in the field on, on this uh, sort of thing, has a, a high level of confidence that they're going to find something there. Uh, but there are some others that have looked at, well, we know about these objects, but you know, is that because we've only looked in that one area of space and we've only seen those? I mean, could there be others that, um, uh, that are, are in different orbits that would be inconsistent with the Planet Nine? So anyway, there's still some question marks about this, um, but uh, this sort of thing has been done before and, and to good effect. And, and if we find another Neptune-sized object out there, it'd be a big deal. All right, thank you all.